love you all. I now invite His Excellency Dr. John Garang Gimabio, Chairman of the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement and Army, SPLM, SPLA, to make his statement. Dr. John Garang. Your Excellency, President Mwai Kibaki, Your Excellency, former President Daniel Arab Moy, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and Representatives of the International Organizations, Distinguished Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, compatriots, fellow countrymen and women, allow me at the outset to convey to you my best wishes for the new year. The year 2005 will mark a year of peace, not only for the whole of Sudan, but equally throughout our sub-region and Africa as a whole. On this joyous day and occasion, I greet and salute all the people of Sudan, from Nimulit in the far south to Halfa in the far north, and from Jenene in the far west to Hamashokreb and Port Sudan in the east. I greet and salute all the marginalized rural people of the Sudan who have suffered in dignified silence for so long. I greet and salute all the farmers, workers and professionals who are the creators of wealth but who have no wealth. and who have seen thy living conditions deteriorate over the years. I greet on the occasion of this peace that we have just signed, all the Sudanese women everywhere. Women in Sudan as elsewhere in the world are the marginalized of the marginalized. <laughs> Whose suffering goes beyond description. The Sudanese rural woman, for example, gets up at five o'clock in the morning to walk five kilometers just to get five gallons of water after five hours walk. She spends another five hours working on the family farm and five more hours making the family meal. And then she goes to sleep. I greet and salute all our students on this occasion of the peace agreement and all our youth who have borne the brunt of the 21 years of this war and to whom the future belongs and urge them to invest in their future and that of the nation in the post-conflict period. Compatriots, Fellow countrymen and women, congratulations. Mabrugu, Mabrugad Lekum. Your movement, the SPLM, SPLA, and the National Congress Party government have delivered to you a comprehensive peace agreement. a just and honorable peace which we have signed today and which you have all witnessed. This is the best Christmas and New Year's gift. For the Sudanese people, to our region, 
and to Africa for 2005. With this peace agreement, we have ended the longest war in Africa, 39 years of two wars since August 1955, out of 50 years of our independence. And if we add the 11 years of Anyanya II, then Sudan had been at war within itself for 49 years, which is the whole of its independence period. With this peace agreement, the LPLM and the National Congress Party government have brought half a century of war to a dignified end. Congratulations. With this peace agreement, there will be no more bombs. There will be no more bombs falling from the sky on innocent children and women. In, in the state of the cries of children and the wailing of women, and the pain of the last 21 years of war, peace will bless us once more with hearing the happy giggling of children and the enchanting ululations of women who are excited in happiness for one reason or another. At the political level, this peace agreement affirms the right of self-determination for the people of Southern Sudan and the right of popular consultation for the people of the Nuba Mountains and Blue Nile, so that the unity of the Sudan becomes based on the free will of the peoples instead of on wars and the forced and false unity of the last 49 years. This peace agreement will change the Sudan forever. Sudan cannot and will never be the same again as this peace agreement will engulf as this agreement will engulf the country in democratic and fundamental transformation instead of being engulfed in wars as it has always been for the last 184 years, since 1821, when our country was first invaded by outside powers and exposed to the ravages of the slave trade and predatory commerce of all sorts, and since before independence from 1955 in civil wars. This peace agreement coincides with the Sudan's 49th independence celebrations. And I agree with what President Bashir said on 31st December in Naivasha, when we signed the last two documents of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, that Sudan's independence on 1st January 1956 was not complete because there was war in the South. The war we are ending today first broke out in Torit on August 18, 1955, four months before independence. And so the South, like other marginalized parts of the Sudan, were really not part of that independence. With this peace agreement, we begin the process of achieving real independence by all Sudanese people and for all the Sudanese people. The signing of this comprehensive peace agreement thus marks the end of what I would correctly call the first republic of the old Sudan that has lasted. That has lasted 49 years from 1st January 1956 to 31st December 2004 when we signed the last two ag agreements on comprehensive ceasefire and implementation modalities. And at a personal note, exactly 42 years to the date when I first left Sudan for the bush on December 31st, 1962, to join the first war, I hope I will not go to the bush again. <laughs> this peace agreement therefore signals the beginning of Sudan's Second Republic of the New Sudan. From here on, Sudan for the first time will be a country 
voluntarily united in justice, honor, and dignity for all its citizens, regardless of thy race, regardless of thy religion, regardless of, of thy agenda, or else, if the country fails to rise to this challenge of moving away from the old Sudan to the new Sudan of free and equal citizens, then the union shall be dissolved amicably and peacefully through the right of self-determination at the end of the six years of the interim period. I call on the Sudanese people to join this peace agreement, to join the SPLM and the National Congress Party in the peace process because this peace agreement belongs to them. It does not belong to John Garang of the, or the SPLM leadership. It does not belong to Ali Osman Taha or President Bashir or to the National Congress Party. This agreement belongs to all of the Sudan, to its neighbors, to Africa, to the Arab world, and indeed to the rest of the world. That is why you see this big attendance today, because this peace belongs to all of them. Although the comprehensive peace agreement was negotiated by two parties as a matter of necessity and practicality in order to end the war in the first place, and now that the war is ended, I call on all the Sudanese people and their political forces to build consensus around the comprehensive peace agreement and use it to end war in other parts of Sudan and to relaunch the Sudan to the promised land of the new Sudan of progress and equality of opportunity for all Sudanese citizens without distinction. Finally and not least, I salute all our martyrs and wounded heroes on both sides. I salute and congratulate all officers, NCOs and soldiers on both sides of the conflict for their heroic sacrifices. I pay tribute and thank our civil population who provided the logistics for the war, especially those in the SPLM administered areas, for without thy contribution, this comprehensive peace agreement would not have been possible. It is because of the role played by our civil population in the long war that we have invited some 50 chiefs and traditional leaders representing our civil society at the grassroots. We have also invited the SPLM military band to represent the SPLA rank and file. On this joyous occasion of the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, and as you will recall that the SPLA has always released prisoners of war, we have released so far more than 3,000 prisoners of war at various times over the last 21 years. I hear, as of today, order the immediate release of all prisoners of war that are still under the custody of the and care of the SPLA. It is fitting as we celebrate this momentous historical landmark to pose to remember the thousands of fellow human beings who recently perished in both Asia and Africa in one of the planet's worst natural disasters of the modern era. Our hearts pour out in grief and solidarity to the peoples of Southeast Asia in this thy hour of tragedy in the hands of a merciless earthquake and tsunamis. As we share the pain and suffering of our fellow human beings in all the countries that have been devastated by the earthquake and the accompanying tsunamis or tidal waves, we also urge the international community after it has pledged so generously to help elevate the suffering and rebuild shelter lives in the affected region to spare some resources to help post-conflict Sudan recover and develop. We therefore look forward to a massive turnout of donors with thy pledges at the prospective Osula Donors Conference for Sudan, which is scheduled soon. Excellencies, compatriots, fellow citizens, in order to understand and appreciate the present historical moment of the signing of the Sudan Comprehensive Peace Agreement, I beg your indulgence to allow me to talk briefly about the problem that we are solving now and to which President Museveni referred to before as the problem of people with the turbines and people with ostrich feathers. As I said before, Sudan has been at war with it, within itself for the whole of 49 years of its independence. And as we end this war today, 
Another serious one is intensifying in the Western Darfur region, while another threatens in Eastern Sudan. Why? What is the problem? Why should a community subject itself to generations of war and suffering in so many parts of, it, of the country? In our view, the attempt by various cartoon-based regimes since 1956 to build a monolithic Arab Islamic state to the exclusion of other parameters of the Sudanese diversity constitutes the fundamental problem of the Sudan and defines the Sudanese conflict. The, the Sudanese state hitherto has excluded the vast majority of the Sudanese people from governance and therefore their marginalization in the political, economic, and social fields. This provoked resistance by the excluded. There have been wars and there continues to be wars in the Sudan simply because the majority of the Sudanese are not stakeholders in governance. The solution to the fundamental problem of Sudan is to evolve an all-inclusive Sudanese state, which we have called the New Sudan, a new Sudanese political dispensation in which all Sudanese are equally stakeholders, irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their race, tribe, or gender. And if this does not work, then to look for other solutions, such as a split in the country. But we believe that a new Sudan is possible. For there are many people in northern Sudan who share with us in the SPLM, SPLA, including the National Congress Party, who believe in the universal ideals of humanity, the ideals of liberty, of freedom, justice, and equality, of opportunity for all Sudanese citizens. As is the case in the South, the events in Darfur, Eastern Sudan, and elsewhere have made it clear that we must have an all-inclusive Sudanese state at the national level and full devolution of power to the various regions of the Sudan. For otherwise, it is unlikely that the country would stand a chance of remaining united. But this all-inclusive Sudanese state, which we have called the New Sudan, must have some basis, for example, in history, that makes us one country or one nation. The question is whether there is a basis for the, for the Sudan as a country. And my answer has always been yes, there is. That is, this affirmative answer to this question has guided us and sustained the SPLM for the last 21 years until today. For this purpose, I have always wanted to go down the corridors of history. And I want to do this very briefly, again, indulgence, uh, making your indulgence. And taking it for that matter, I'm a gorilla, I take my time, you see. Our presentation in the SPLM is that we, the Sudanese, are indeed a historical people, and that the new Sudan has an anchor in history. If we cannot find an anchor in history, then we either create one or dissolve the union peacefully. Sometimes it is necessary to go back in order to gain momentum, in order to go forward. President Museveni called it something in his language. That is why you see sheep, you see rams going, moving backwards first when they fight. They gain momentum before they lock horns. Recently in Southeast Asia, it was noticed that the tragedy of the earthquake and the tsunamis, first the sea receded back and then came forward with, with a devastating force. We very much need to do this exercise in the Sudan, to go back thousands of years, so as to rediscover ourselves, gain momentum, and then move forward with the momentum of 5,000 years to propel ourselves and smash ourselves into history once again. And we have a very long history indeed. Peoples and kingdoms have lived, thrived, and disappeared in the geographical area that constitutes the present modern Sudan. Many people will be surprised that in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the Sudan was part of the Garden of Eden. Where it is stated in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 14, that the Garden of Eden was watered by four rivers. One of them is the White Nile, 
it is the passion in the Bible. The other way is the Gihon, and there's the Gihon Hotel in uh, Addis Ababa. It is the Blue Nile. And to the east by the Tigris and the Euphrates. So the Garden of Eden was not a small vegetable garden. It was a vast piece of territory. My own village happens to be just east of the Nile, so I fall in the Garden of Eden. It will surprise many of you that the Prophet Moses was married to a Sudanese named Zephora, as narrated in the Book of Numbers. From the biblical days, we move to the ancient Sudanese kingdoms of Awad, of Eretat, of Anu, of Maida, that are believed to be connected with the present day Dinka, Shuluk, Nuer, other Nilotic tribes, and the peoples of Central and Western Sudan. And up the corridors of history, we move to the Kingdom of Merawi, that bequeathed and spread iron civilization to the rest of Africa. Merawi got transformed into the Christian kingdoms of Nubia. They then followed the spread of Islam and Arab migration into the Sudan, and the sub subsequent collapse of the last Nubian Christian kingdoms of Makuria, Alawa, and Soba in 1504. Followed by the rise on the edges of the Islamic kingdoms of Kingdom of Sinar, which was founded by the Funch and the Chuluk people. The rest of Sudanese history is familiar to all of us, from the Islamic kingdoms of Sinar, to the Teko Egyptian occupation, to the first Islamic uh, Mahdist state, to the Anglo-Egyptian condominium, to independence in 1956, and to the Anyanya movement of 1955 to 1972, to the SPLM, SPLA in 1983, to the second Islamic uh, state in the Sudan of the Ingaz, uh, with which we no negotiated from 1989, and to the comprehensive peace agreement which we sign today. This is the history of the Sudan, and this is how we got here. It has been a long journey of more than 5,000 years to reach Naivasha and Nyayo Stadium today. It is important to know and appreciate where we came from in order to better be able to chart the way forward with the momentum of historical force. That was Sudan in history. As for the contemporary Sudan, we have more than 500 different ethnic groups speaking more than 130 different languages. We have two major religions in the country, Islam and Christianity, and traditional African religions. Our contention in the SPLM SPLA is that the Sudan belongs equally to all the peoples that now inhabit the country. And its history, its diversity and richness is the common heritage of all Sudanese. The comprehensive peace agreement that we have signed today is based on these historical and contemporary objective realities of Sudan. And by implementing the provisions of the comprehensive peace agreement that we have signed today, we shall evolve an all-inclusive form of governance that ensures that all Sudanese are equally stakeholders, irrespective of where they come from. And this is what will keep our country together. Furthermore, by adapting and applying the form of governance and wealth sharing arrangements stipulated in the Comprehensive Peace Agreement to other parts of the country with sim similar afflictions as the South, such as Darfur, Eastern Sudan, and other parts of the country, we can once again become a great nation that is voluntarily united in diversity rather than divided by diversity and possibly kept under a coerced and fake unity. This is the context and the value of the comprehensive peace agreement we have signed today. It provides the Sudan with a rare and perhaps the last opportunity to make a real paradigm shift from the old Sudan of exclusivity to the new Sudan of inclusivity. Achieved not through force, but through the exercise of the right of self-determination. Viewed this way, the right of self-determination, which is one of the cornerstones of the comprehensive peace agreement, is a blessing rather than a curse as many Northern Sudanese here. I want to ensure you that we will all work together uh, with the National Congress Party and other political forces in the Sudan so that we develop a new paradigm so that we keep our country together. Excellencies, 
distinguished guests, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me, I'm almost finished. The transformation which shall be engendered by this agreement, which I have alluded to, shall be reflected first and foremost in democratic mutation and to which the SPLM is fully committed. Surely by democratic, we do not mean return to the sham procedural democracy of the past, which was but a camouflage for the perpetuation of vested interests. In that sham democracy, civil rights were subject to the whims of rulers. The majority of Sudanese in the regions remained peripheral to the center of power and was treated as an expandable quantum only to be manipulated through political trickery and double dealing. Transformation envisaged in the Comprehensive Peace Agreement puts an end to all that since it represents a political and socio-economic paradigm shift which entails recognition of political diversity by guaranteeing full freedom for political pluralism, the entrenchment of human rights and people's rights in the Constitution, the upholding of the independence of the judiciary, including the creation of an inviolable constitutional court and commitment to the rule of law by the government and the governed, and the establishment of a truly independent and competent civil service at all levels of government. It also conceptualizes and seeks to realize a recreation of the legislature in a manner that shall ensure rigorous checks and balances and guarantees powers to the government of Southern Sudan and to the states, powers which can neither be withdrawn nor impaired by other centers of power. Eventually, the Con Co Comprehensive Peace Agreement ordains that within a maximum of three to four years, governance at all levels shall be mandated by the supreme will of the people through internationally monitored free and fair elections. Excellencies, distinguished guests, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, the long war to which we have put an end to today impoverished our citizens and reduced our country with tremendous resources to destitution. Without claiming that the new economic paradigm shift to which I have alluded to is the ultimate panacea for curing the nation's ills, it provides at least a vision and modalities to address the problems besetting the nation in the here and now. While I leave the world hereafter to those who claim to have divine qualifications. In Southern Sudan and other war affected areas, as well as in the slums of our major cities, the baseline from which we shall start development is shocking and will, and I will not bore you here with the statistics of the status of these parameters as such as prevalence of child malnutrition, primary education, mortality rates among children, rate of maternal mortality, rate of births attended by skilled health staff, access to improved water sources. This is statistics in Southern Sudan in particular and other war affected areas are among the worst in the world. To combat this pervasive and humiliating poverty and political disenfranchisement, a general policy framework has been charted out and published in a booklet entitled SPLM Strategic Framework for War to Peace Transition. In summary, the SPLM shall articulate and implement a social, political, and economic development strategy and programs that include the following highlights. First, the SPLM shall adopt an economic, an economic development paradigm that emphasizes growth through rural development and transformation of traditional agriculture that is integrated with agro-industries. We must transform the present subsistence traditional agriculture in Southern Sudan and other areas through technological innovations, making agriculture the engine of growth and agriculture as the engine of growth will literally be fueled by oil. The, the building of dikes for flood control and, the, and canals and underground water development for irrigation will be priorities to guarantee crop production. Secondly, the SPLM will change the urban bias and center focus development paradigm in favor of rural and decentralized development. The SPLM vision, policy, and slogan shall be to take the towns to people in the countryside rather than people to towns. Where they end up in slums, 
has happened in many countries with the consequent deterioration in their quality of life. Rural small town planning and rural electrification will therefore be priorities. Thirdly, the SPLM shall emphasize and develop new ways of delivery of social services. As we move to the new era of peace, the people of Sudan, particularly in the war affected communities, face formidable social and economic problems and also tremendous opportunities. The major problems that require immediate attention fall in the areas of health, education, and water. We must find new ways to rap rapidly and efficiently deliver these services. For example, constructing windmills all over the rural Sudan to provide clean drinking water and build micro dams for gener generating small scale hydroelectric power for rural towns, as well as the use of solar, wind, uh, wind and biomass energy sources. Fourthly, the SPLM shall exert all efforts to build physical infrastructure, roads, rail and river transport and telecommunications. There has never been any tarmac road in, in the new Sudan since creation, since the day of, days of Adam and Eve. And this is an area the size of Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda and Burundi put together. The SPLM vision for transport infrastructure is at three levels to develop regional linkages within southern Sudan and with the neighbors and with northern Sudan at this, and to involve the state and local communities in this infrastructure building. Fifthly and finally, in terms of social and cultural parameters, the SPLM shall adopt strategies and programs that shall restore and achieve dignity of people of the Sudan through social and cultural empowerment. Programs will include information and media, radio, TV, print, promotion of New Sudan, arts, songs, dances, theater of New Sudan, sports, development of local lang languages and cultures by the various communities of the Sudan, archives of the struggle and modern history of Sudan, archaeology, antiquities, and ancient his history of Sudan, Africa, and the Middle East, so that we can find our rightful place in the world. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, the com comprehensive peace agreement and safeguards full compliance with the requirements of the agreement. The SPLM will work in partnership with the National Congress Party. The objectives of this partnership is to ensure a sincere implementation of the comprehensive peace agreement in both letter and spirit, and to provide within the parameters of this agreement permanent solutions to the problems inherent in Sudan's cultural, social, and political diversity. Failure to appreciate the wealth and diversity was another cause of national crisis. For diversity viewed posit positively uh, is a mutually enriching phenomenon and ultimately a source of national cohesion and strength. Viewed otherwise, that is, as a source of dissimilarity or distinction, it shall lead inevitably to the ultimate disintegration of the country as threatens today and which, by, at all costs, we must uh, avoid. Uh, furthermore, the partnership does not mean abandonment of political allies by any of the two parties. However, this partnership, while safeguarding the new political dispensation, shall in effect nurture the democratic transformation and political multiplicity, which by their very nature may lead to diverse alliances. But so long as those alliances are based on commitment to the Latin spirit of the peace agreements that we uh, put an end to the longest war in Africa, alliances become assets, not liabilities. It is our submission that political struggle in the Sudan shall henceforth translate into competing visions of peace, progress, and development, and never into the use of, of force or the threat of the use of force. The SPLM, ladies and gentlemen, will ensure that the new political dis dispensation is wide enough to accommodate all legitimate political and social forces in the country. It is therefore our hope to achieve popular consensus on those agreements. As the movement that has been fighting against marginalization of others, we shall not tolerate the exclusion of anybody from this process. The parties to the Comprehensive Peace Agreement share this conviction, and we have included in the agreement inclusiveness. In this regard, the SPLM will play its role at the national level to work with the National Congress Party and other political forces to ensure full inclusiveness.
while the SPLM and the National Congress Party shall be major partners in the initial interim government of national unity, our understanding of partnership is well rooted in inclusiveness, which means to bring on board all political forces in the Sudan, chief among them, the political parties within the National Congress Party umbrella and the political parties within the National Democratic Alliance, which we uh, call upon to complete negotiations with the government of Sudan based on the Jeddah agreement uh, that, that, that are holding negotiations in Cairo, and so that they take their share in the government of national unity and participate fully in all the national commissions stipulated in the comprehensive peace agreement, especially the National Constitution Review Commission. Uh, finally, on, on, uh, on issues that con concern Southern Sudanese, I want to say a little on South-South dialogue. On building national consensus, the SPLM is also, will also spearhead the South-South dialogue. This dialogue above, above all is to heal wounds and restore fraternity and mutual respect so as to create a healthy political environment that is accommodative of all Southern Sudanese political forces, both at the level of Southern Sudan and at the national level. But South-South dialogue is not only about power, it is about all an inevitable democratic exercise based on mature and selfless political discourse among Southern Sudanese with a view of galvanizing all